Let me explain to you what I'm doing right now. Uh, I'm watching Manchester United Swansea uh, from about the 65th minute to the 85th minute. And what I'm doing is I'm going to track how many of Manchester United's first touch is with the outside of their foot. Okay? Just the first touch. Let's see. 20 minutes. So, 85th minute, been watching for 20 minutes, and Manchester United has had two receiving first touches with the outside of their foot, both by Anthony Martial. Swansea, at the same time, in the same time frame, only once. So we're talking in a 20 minute span of English Premier League soccer, only three touches with the outside of the foot. Now I'm going to compare and contrast with an MLS game and an NWSL game, just to see where the you know the good habits and the bad habits and and just to see where we're at. See if there's a big difference. talking NWSL, Portland, North Carolina, uh, the best players in the world uh, on the women's side really. Um, and in a 20 minute span, 50, uh, 65th to the 85th minute, once was the ball received with the outside of their foot. Um, and we're talking so the first clip was Manchester United and Swansea. Second was North Carolina and Portland Thorns. I don't understand how so many youth coaches and so many skills trainers, skills trainers, you just go on Instagram and, and search them all, and you see them working on drills, receive, working on receiving with the outside of their foot. When at the highest of highest levels, the highest of the high, nobody ever receives with the outside of their foot. It's a wasted skill. It's a waste of time to work on it in training. I can't stand it. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. Okay. Now, a little bit later, I'm going to watch an MLS game, and I'm going to see that we're, we're probably going to see the same thing. So I just finished watching the uh, the MLS game, and it was Seattle Sounders versus um, Minnesota, and Seattle Sounders in the 20 minute span that I watched received with the outside of their foot six times, and Minnesota once, and Seattle Sounders dominated possession uh, for the duration of the time that I watched. But, uh, but again, it just shows you that the outside of the foot first touch really isn't something that you see in, professional, in the professional game. What our kids are doing is they're developing a bad habit that they can get away with at the current level that they're playing in. But once they make a jump in the level that they're playing, that bad habit is going to really magnify itself and they're not going to get away with it and then they're going to lose playing time they're going to lose you know their skill development because because they have bad habits on the field that they get they're not going to be able to get away with so stop teaching bad habits start teaching good habits and if you don't believe me do the research yourself watch more soccer watch each league don't be a snob and say, oh, well, I can't watch this league or I can't watch that league. Watch every league and compare and contrast. And really, you see the MLS. MLS is 
a lower level than the EPL just based on that little thing. Obviously, there's a thousand different things that are holding the MLS back compared to the EPL, but that's just one of just just technical, being clean, good first touch, and being able to play. So, hope you got something out of this. Do it yourself and focus on good habits and developing good habits.